welcome to the Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting July 9, 2015. A few housekeeping items. If any member of the audience wishes to speak to an item on the agenda, there are speaker request forms to the left of the dais. Please fill out the request with the agenda number of the item you wish to speak and hand it to the secretary. Cell phones and electronic devices. At this time, we ask that any man over the audience that has a cell phone or other electronic device that you either turn it off or turn the ringer to silent. If you need to take a call, please step out in the hallway so the meeting will not be disrupted. Okay, I'd entertain a motion to approve the June 4th minute, minutes. Is it? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Item number two. Thank you. Item number two is 15VA001, a request to reduce the minimum required side yard setback from 12 foot to 8 foot on property located at 3119 Flint Drive. Uh, this is located in the uh, Country Club Heights subdivision. Uh, let me take you through some slides here. The zoning map of properties, you can see the property is zoned low density residential in a, an established low density residential neighborhood. Um, property to the west is zoned Park Forest District and is part of the Arrowhead Country Club. An aerial view of the property, single family detached residence with an, at or with an attached uh, three stall garage. Um, some elevations of the home and what is proposed the proposed work. Uh, for your clarification, um, the pro applicant is proposing to create an addition above the um, northernmost garage stall or this garage stall. So currently today, uh, as you'll see in pictures, um, the house does not extend that to the, uh, the width of the garage. They're proposing to create an extension um, that would allow that. Um, when you have a two-story stru uh, two structure, a 12-foot side yard setback is required. Um, with uh, the way the building is constructed today, only an eight-foot side yard setback is re required. So when the applicant brings in this uh, extension of the structure, then they would need to be, have a 12 foot side yard setback and they wouldn't be able to provide that. Uh, layout of the floor um, in this particular uh, diagram, the uh, extension of the house would be right here. And a site survey. Here's a um, picture of the house from Flint Drive. You can see the third, third garage stall that's actually on the north side of the property as it exists today. It has one story structure. They're proposing to extend the main floor of the living or the house to the north across that. And we'll look at Flint Street looking north, Flint looking south, uh, a view of the uh, side property line looking towards the west. Uh, as you can see, Arrowhead behind that, um, and the location of the neighboring home. It should be noted that the home located to the north is approximately 17 feet off of the property line. Um, and is also a two-story structure. They are currently meeting setback requirements. Uh, look from on the property looking towards the east. Uh, look at their, um, the backside of the proposed addition. And uh, just a, another general view of the side of that property. Um, <clears throat> Staff has noted that uh, the proposed uh, addition is for a living space, which is a permitted use in the low density neighbor or residential district. Um, if the Zoning Board of Adjustments should find that the uh, um, request should be approved, um, then we noted the stipulation that construction plan should be submitted showing that, the residential, that a residential fire sprinkler protection system is being provided for the structure. However, in reviewing the application, staff has noted that the, uh, that there are no conditions on the property which would limit um, the build buildability. There's a, a reasonable use of the land that's existing there today. Um, that the proposed reduction in side yard setback is not the minimum adjustment required for them to be able to create additional living space. Uh, <coughs> uh, that the, the mass and scale of the ad uh, additional building that they're uh, proposing is not in the character and style of the rest of the neighborhood, and that the uh, proposed variance is contra therefore contrary to the public interest and not in the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance. Um, and also, finally noted as well that 
the requested variance does not support the stated neighborhood goal in the comprehensive plan of conserving natural features and limiting impacts on the natural environment. Um, the added, as we said, the added scale and scope of the proposed addition would reduce the amount of open space in the neighborhood, especially in an area where um, visibility and access to the adjacent golf course is of importance to the neighborhood. And it's for these reasons the staff recommends that the variance to reduce the side yard setback be denied. Uh, we do have some representatives uh, from the property available uh, for questions at this time. The staff is available for questions. Got a question. Uh, Steve? Normally, you know, we have the variance board meeting. We have the criteria up here for us to look at each one of the criteria that we could. Could we get that in the future with the criteria so we can look at? Because when we make a motion, we need to have that criteria available for us to make that motion. Vicky? Yeah, so the criteria is actually in the staff report, spelt out in a chart form. And in addition to that, we give you instructions that if you find that you want to approve, what criteria you should cite, and if you find that you are going to deny, what criteria you should cite. So it's there, it's just broken out so that it assists you in making your motion. And it's on the last page of the report. I have one person that would like to speak, Aaron Gorton. Would you come, please? Hi, I'm Aaron Broughton with Skull Construction. Um, Shane submitted the request here. Um, you know, we've got a client in that area that growing family, so they would like to add a couple bedrooms. Um, they've talked to their neighbors. No neighbors to them have expressed any concerns with the addition. We're not changing the physical uh, exterior footprint of the building, the same setbacks from existing, obviously, a first floor next to a garage. Uh, we'd be raising that second floor, adding a couple bedrooms and a bathroom. Um, we did ha receive one call when we sent out our letters, and that call was uh, an approval call. They were okay with the call. Otherwise than that, we received no feedback from the letters that we sent out. Um, like I say, the neighbor has went around to their neighbors, or the property owner to their neighbors, and have talked to them all, and they've all been okay with it. there any other questions if not I uh, John thank you madam chair um, <clears throat> just a just a question I guess to the architect um, with regard to the addition which is just to add, ex extend the first floor living is that yeah you'd extend above the garage those trusses would come off we'd essentially just frame over the garage add two bedrooms, one on each end, and then a, a, a bathroom in the middle, so and that would be off the living space. So the roof uh, square footage probably won't change? Roof square footage would not change. And we would reuse those trusses. Those trusses would match up with the existing truss line. Thank you. Karen? Thank you. Um, if we go by what is stated that we should look at as far as whether it's hardship, whether there's um, a minimum adjustment necessary because of the topography or something like that. I just can't see how, how we can say this is going to be okay to do from a legal standpoint. And um, I, I, I don't see any limitations on the property. I don't see any minimum adjustment necessary. Uh, I don't see any conditions that would result in an unnecessary hardship. So I'm having trouble trying to find a way to say that this is okay. So I'm going to make a motion that says to deny based on the fact that, that it does not comply with the city's comprehensive plan and that there's no minimum adjustment necessary, uh, or there's no conditions of the property that, would cre that creates undue hardship. I don't know if I missed anything legally but that's my motion for now and we'll see where it goes is there a second <coughs> Jan's Jan seconded the motion Steve 
you know, I've been on the, the variance board for a long time, and, and the one that we use a lot is this number two, so the strict application of the provision of zoning ordinance denies any reasonable use of land, and that comes up all the time. What do you consider reasonable use of land? What they consider reasonable use of land may be different than what you consider reasonable. If their family's bigger, whatever reasonable could be having those extra two bedrooms, which would be reasonably accustomed for their, for their for kids. And I'm looking at the, we always have the pictures up here so you can see what surrounds it. Is there gonna be a problem? Like you can see it's all wide open. You got a golf course in the back. There's plenty of distance between the two buildings. So I, I guess I'm gonna vote against denying. I think I don't see a problem with it. The neighbors have been contacted and apparently they think it's reasonable use to me, which is, is legal enough to, to consider it reasonable. All those in favor, please say aye. All those opposed? No. Motion. I make a motion that we approve. Motions are made to approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Number two, as I stated earlier. Yes. Just for clarification, could the motion maker cite the criteria for the record as to the motion to approve, please? Item, uh, reason I'm using criteria number two, that, that it's reasonable use to them to have this included or addition. Carla. Um, I just wanted to make sure, since, since this, is, this is a variance, granting a variance, we need two-thirds of the board, and I wanted to make sure that it was clear to Andrea that two-thirds, who voted for um, the variance. Roll call. Okay. Uh, Dennis. Jan? In favor. Steve? Aye. Eric? In favor. Karen? No. Karen's no. John? Aye. And I'm voting aye. Thank you. Yes. That's correct. Yes. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other items for the Zoning Board of Adjustment? If not, I'd entertain a motion to close this meeting. Dennis made the motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The meeting's adjourned. We are now on to the Rapid City Planning Commission meeting. Items one through 16 have been placed on the consent calendar and may be approved as a group. Action will be taken on all consent items in accordance with staff recommendation by a single vote. Any item may be removed for the consent calendar by a planning commission member, staff member, audience member for separate consideration at this time. The findings of the planning commission are recommendations to city council. The city council will make a final decision with the exception of the following items. Item three, 15 PD 001, Item 13, 15 UR 013. The Rapid City Planning Commission actions on these items are final unless any party appeals that decision to the Rapid City Council. All appeals must be submitted in writing to the Planning and Development Services Department by the close of business on the seventh full calendar day following action by the Planning Commission. Are there any items one through 16 that would staff would like removed? Yes. Three, four, twelve, 
and 14. I'm, I'm still marking. <laughs> Are there any items planning commission member would like removed from the consent calendar? John? Um, Item two. Eric? Items 11 and 13. And item 16. Are there any items an audience member would like? I don't have a thing here. Okay. Move to approve with exception. Motion's been <laughs> made uh, by Steve and seconded uh, by John to approve items 1, 9, 10, and 15. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Okay, item number 2. Good morning. Um, item number two is to dissolve TID 63. This is Copperfield Vistas. This TID district is about 175 acres and it's located west of Elkville Road and northeast of US Highway 44. Um, this TID was created in 2007 um, in order to create drainage crossing and improve access to the Rushmore Business Park through Homestead Street. Um, in 2007, the assessed valuation of the property was just over um, one million dollars yeah one million eighty eighty one thousand one hundred and four dollars and the property now has an assessed valuation of over eighteen million dollars um, so in the seven years it's increased seventeen million dollars um, the finance office has indicated that the city's portion of the 2015 tax revenues is about three hundred and twenty three thousand um, dollars and the finance office has indicated that all project costs have been paid off, and so by state law, we are to dissolve the TID district. Eric? I just need to abstain from this item. With a, I have a relationship with the agent. John? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I actually pulled this. Uh, there's often discussion in the uh, community about the value of tax increment financing that the community has used. And uh, this was one example of uh, a great deal of success for this community. Um, land uh, with a, a fair and low valuation and use uh, has now, uh, as you indicated, over $323,000 a year in um, revenue uh, uh, to the city. Uh, also, I, I would guess that the school district and the county uh, are beneficiaries of the development. Uh, and because of this particular project, we created some jobs that came to this community. So we not only did employment, uh, I, I just think it's a tremendous success story and I, and I just wanted to um, make sure that we reviewed something that worked very well for this community. It paid off 13 years ahead of the projected schedule. Uh, so those revenues come much quicker to um, the municipal and county entities that uh, are looking for them. So thank you for going through that, sir. Appreciate yeah. it. You're welcome. I'd entertain a motion to approve. Or so moved. Second. Motion has been made to approve. And sec all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passed. Item number three. Item number three is 15 PD001. It was on the consent calendar with a recommendation to continue to the July 23rd Planning Commission meeting. The applicants uh, indicated that they're not going to be starting the uh, construction on a drainage feature in time for the July 23rd meeting and for staff to be able to inspect it once it is completed. And to, so to give them a little more time and not have this on the next agenda, staff recommends that 
the item be continued to the August 6th meeting. Motion's been made by Karen to move and it's seconded by Eric to move to the August 6th meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passed. Item number four. Oh, Madam, excuse me, we had a speaker. Oh. Uh, sh okay, okay, she left. Item four. Item four. Item four is a rezone uh, for Buffalo Ridge subdivision from low density one to low density two. This is property located in the southeast corner of Catron Boulevard and Highway 16, and it's the applicant's desire to develop this as a townhome, single family residential mix. The uh, letters that our office mailed noticing the neighborhood of the meeting had the incorrect meeting date. We missed it by two days. We did notify the applicant to inform him of that error. He was fine with this being continued to your next meeting. And as such, we will send out new letters and advertise and let the public know to come to your June 23rd planning commission meeting. July. Or July 23rd, thank you. John made motion to move to the July 23rd meeting and Steve seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passed, item number five. Oh, excuse me, me, items that wasn't five, it's 11. 11. I misspoke. Item number 11, please. I'm not sure who pulled that one. Oh, Eric did. Just wanted to abstain from it. Okay. Eric 16, abstain. Moved to approve. Steve made motion, Karen seconded to approve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Item number 12. Item number 12 is a preliminary subdivision plan to uh, s subdivide a parcel of land into two residential lots. And this is out in the county, but within our three mile plotting jurisdiction, it's out along Sheridan Lake Road, past Countryside South, uh, past Clarkson Road. Uh, there is a road that heads to the north. It's called Norseman Lane and then it turns into somewhat of a, um, an asphalt milling uh, surfaced lane that currently serves two homes. And at the very end of that is a rather large parcel and they're wanting to subdivide that into two lots. They brought in the information showing that they would improve that to a 22 foot wide asphalt milled surface. And our staff looked at it, concurred with that granted exceptions to not have to do curb, gutter, sidewalk, all the standard improvements that would be needed for a road that's within our three mile platting jurisdiction. They've demonstrated on-site facilities will work for that location. We released the report to you just letting them know, bring in the final plat and we would get it recorded. <clears throat> because of its location in such a tree covered area and because they are using on-site wells uh, the fire department did ask for our standard stipulation requiring that the new residential structure have a fire sprinkler protection system per their code and th the applicants were fine with that. But what came to our uh, realization yesterday as we sat down is those plans that were submitted showing this improvement to a 22 foot wide asphalt milling certainly weighed in on why they got the exceptions and we, we need to go back and just as a reminder, it's, it's a requirement and, and, and so these are just making it somewhat redundant but we've added four stipulations and there's a handout on your dais today that shows those four and basically it's saying the preliminary plans that you submitted, don't forget, you've got to um, bring them back signed and sealed so that we can approve them. We will inspect it, we'll collect a cost estimate uh, and collect inspection fees for that. If they want a final plat before the improvements in, we'll get surety. If they want to wait, then they just pay the inspection fees and go forward. The county had indicated that they do not maintain this road. Uh, obviously the city can't, it's outside of our jurisdiction. And so a standard requirement we see in these kinds of subdivisions out in the county is that the individuals wanting to create additional development come forward with a road maintenance agreement 
So that as a property sell over the year, and we all start getting those phone calls, who's gonna fill my potholes? We can remind them that they do. So that's uh, another stipulation that's added. I did send this to the uh, property owner's consultant for their review as well. I think we're all on the same page. So with that, I'd like to uh, recommend that you approve item number 12 with the revised stipulations as shown on the dais. Steve made motion, John seconded to approve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, motion passed. Item 13. I pulled this one too and I just need to abstain. Uh, have a relationship with the agent. Steve made motion to approve, Jan seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passed. Item 14. Item 14. Uh, we've, we pulled this one, Madam Chair. Again, the notification letter had the wrong meeting date on it. And uh, this is a, actually a, a, a city sponsored project so uh, we will make the change send out letters and bring this back to you to your july 23rd meeting so please continue it today to your july 23rd meeting john made the motion to move to continue karen seconded all those in favor please say aye, aye. aye. opposed motion passed item 16. Madam Chair, I pulled that one. And, and the reason I did that is because uh, the recommendation is to approve the rezone. And if I understood it correctly, they said if they, if the uh, allowance to have bed and breakfast within the, the uh, Park Forest District, that they would just remove this. So it, wouldn't it be better to continue this until that's completed or um, the recommendation in the project report says to acknowledge the applicant's request to withdraw the application oh okay so the the agenda is not correct then oh the okay the cheat note on the front of the agenda yeah sorry my agenda doesn't have those cheat notes so <laughs> oh okay okay I'll, we I, will I, our apologies th that's okay I did so see that in the staff report but then I was confused because of the agenda so so the motion then should be to withdraw? Yes, it, to acknowledge, acknowledge the withdrawal, withdrawal. Of, okay. of the request. That, that'll be my motion then. Thank you, Karen. Karen made the motion to acknowledge the withdrawal of the request and Eric seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm just making a couple notes here. So. Who's just looking at it? <laughs> okay. We're ready for the regular agenda items now. Item number 17. Let's see here, I need to draw it. So we need to look at that more closely. Thank you. Item number 17 is 15 PD 019, a final plan development application to allow construction of mini storage units on property currently zoned General Commercial District. This is located at 519 Catherine Avenue, approximately 450 feet west of the intersection of Haynes and Catherine Avenue. Um, for approximately 2.049 acres of property, the applicant is proposing to construct a total of five structures for, with mini storage warehousing. <coughs> when a mini storage warehousing unit is being proposed within the general commercial district, there are certain uh, criteria that need to be met with regards to architectural standards and screening of the property. Um, in uh, particular, um, the property is, for, is required to be screened by a, an opaque screening fence or a chain link fence with slats in it. Um, in this instance, the applicant is requesting an exception to waive that requirement and provide a landscaping buffer in lieu of that um, for portions of the property and they will be providing the required opaque screening fence on uh, another portion of the property. Um, in addition, and based on that, the applicant is also asking for an exception to waive the requirement for architectural or for the architectural standards. In particular, um, the requirement is that these structures be constructed with masonry, stone, wood, or 
metal simulated wood siding. Um, the applicant is proposing just to construct the uh, units with uh, um, steel siding. And let me take you to some slides to look at the property. Maybe. Zoning map prop, you can see the arrow indicates the property zone general commercial district. Or there is medium density residential lake located to the south and to the west. Um, those are the areas that would primarily need to have the uh, opaque screening fence uh, between the uh, uh, residential uses or the anticipated residential uses and the um, storage units. Uh, aerial view of the property is undeveloped today. There are um, There is a, a drainage channel located on the north end of the property um, that will be um, uh, bridged by a, a box culvert. Uh, typical look at the storage units, elevations, as, the number, as well as the number of units and the dimensions of those units. Uh, layout of the property, this is the landscaping. You can see they're providing the landscaping buffer that's required. Um, this is on its side, but north um, is this direction. So Cat this is Catherine Avenue. Um, they are providing the uh, required screening fence or landscape screening on the north side of the property where it's accessed at, as well as on the western side of the property, uh, which abuts the residential district. On the southern side of the property, they're proposing, or this end of the property, they are proposing to provide the uh, uh, a chain, uh, uh, chain link fence with slats as required by ordinance. A look at the signage that they're proposing. No electronic or LED signage is being proposed as part of this uh, uh, application. Uh, another look at the, the structures uh, and their, their typical layout. Uh, view of the site um, with the signposts on the property, as you can see, uh, yesterday there was some grading that had been, that it's being done on the property on a, on a uh, approved grading permit. A look at Catherine Avenue to the east. And a look on the, um, Look a closer look onto the site. This was taken before the grading had done, been done, but uh, the property just extends to the south uh, in that photo. Um, based on the alternative um, landscaping design, uh, we staff during review of the application believes that the alter alternative landscaping design will provide enough of a buffer between the residential uses that we anticipate occurring to the west and to the south. Um, and for that reason, we can approve the exception to uh, uh, require the landscaping buffer in lieu of the uh, screening fence, as well as approve the exception to um, waive the requirement for the architectural features. Uh, with that, staff recommends the application be approved with the stipulations outlined in the staff report. And we are available for questions at this time. John. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, when you say it's just an all steel building, yes, is that a painted steel? Yes. Um, okay, that, that's just not uh, corrugated. Yeah, yes, it's not a corrugated building. It does have it is. And then, painted. secondly, uh, is is the sign that we're seeing in here the approval for the sign? No, it's not. Uh, they will be required to get a sign permit at the time of its application. It's just a, a show you the design of what they're proposing in the location. So, um, is that a uh, is that a monument sign or? Yes, um, actually, I have this up here. I guess my question was: I noticed that it didn't have a phone number, which everybody puts their phone number on uh, for those things. And so, at the sign permitting pace, any requirements that, that are uh, in place will be made to to issue the permit or? Yes, uh, and that's a good question. Um, one of the criteria for storage units that are located in the general commercial district is that a management um, team or company be provided for that. Uh, the applicant did meet that criteria. So while there is not a phone number on that sign, I would imagine that there's gonna be a phone number posted somewhere on the site. Um, Another in order sign. To contact the management company. All right. Um, thank you. Karen. Thank you. I'm kind of following John's question. This, this is going to be a monument sign, did you say? It's not going to be on the building? That's correct. Okay. I wasn't sure about that. And did you say there was five buildings? It is. Um, there were originally three proposed. 
However, due to fire department requirements for the length of a uh, structure or the mass of a structure, they broke two of those buildings into two buildings apiece. Okay. I, I was looking at the picture and I couldn't see five buildings and I, I wondered where the other one came from. Um, uh, is there a requirement on how tall those trees have to be? I mean, if they're going to be a buffer, you know, I don't want two foot tall trees and 20 years they might be five feet or 10 feet or something. Uh, sure. Um, there's not a requirement listed in the stipulations today that they plant mature trees, um, which would uh, allow for the extra height. Um, if that was something that you wanted to consider, you could. Um, the uh, landscaping plan requires that the trees that are provided must have a minimum what, a 40 foot spread, or uh, if you're using pine trees, they have to be a minimum di trunk diameter. Uh, that being the case, that they do meet the landscaping requirements, so the trees that they are providing will theoretically grow to the appropriate size. Okay, I, I do have some concerns about that. Um, and same with John, this question about the metal building. It's not corrugated, so is it metal, but it's, it's got some texture to it or something, so it's not just a foundation. metal building? Uh, we, I do have a, there, it's 26 gauge um, cor uh, steel building. Um, it's going to be painted with polyester paint. Um, give me a moment, I can find the. That, that'd be great. And Madam Chair, if I might speak a little bit to the yes. trees. So our ordinance requires that your tree have so much caliber dimension at the base of it when it's an evergreen tree or even a deciduous tree for that matter. For these evergreen trees, that means they're usually between four and six foot tall when they come out of the nursery and you stick them in the ground. Um, then over the course of years, they may grow 40 feet tall and have a 40 foot spread. That takes time. What we found in some instances where we want to have bigger trees sooner, we have required them. Sometimes we've said that we want them to be at least 18 feet tall. The difficulty with our soils here is that sometimes those root systems don't take and it's a perpetual replacement and the trees that were allowed to follow the size dimension, which is recommended by the nurseries, will catch them if we've got a mix of them planted together. But it is at your discretion. If you would like a larger tree there from the point of planting, we can stipulate that as a part of this. Um, to go back to your question regarding uh, construction materials, um, the application materials submitted with the application show uh, 26 gauge PBR panels for end walls and side walls. Um, 20, 26 gauge steel, in other words. In terms of the painting colors, well, the applicant has indicated that uh, they'll be primarily um, this ash gray color here um, with I, as I understand it, blue roofs. Um, I, I have the, uh, I have what was provided was part of the, uh, I'm not that on. Uh, they're, they're not in color, but that's a, a elevation of a typical building. And the dimensions there indicate underneath. Okay, so if I can continue. So from the picture, it looks like it looks to me corrugated. It doesn't look smooth. That's my that was my question, as far as the texture of it. So does it look like a steel corrugated? many storage warehouse like you see some of those that are out there that are just so basic that if this is going to be in, in, in a close proximity to neighborhoods, I would like to make sure that, that it's, it blends in and I mean I'm not opposed to what they're doing, it's just that I want to make sure that, that the neighbors don't have to look at corrugated steel 
even if it's a good color, it's still going to look like an industrial building. And for someone who lives in an area that has a steel building and they have trees that they planted, you know, half the trees live and half, they, half don't, even when they're small. I mean, it just, and as far as a buffer, it, it makes me a little leery. Um, I don't mind steel siding as long as it's not corrugated looking. And I don't know how you stipulate that, but I would like to m make sure that it is not that kind of material, I guess. And I don't know how you do that. Madam Chair, one option you folks would have would be to continue this item to your next meeting and allow the applicants, number one, to be in attendance so that we could ask them these questions. And two, uh, to pose them with the challenge of bringing forward the best design they can come up with for this site, sharing with them some of the comments that you've given today. That's, that's not a bad idea, Vicki, because um, although I'm, I'm not fond of slatted fencing, I, I know that's legal so they can do that. And I am assuming that the, the chain link fence goes all the way around, even where the trees are because of, as John mentioned, security mm -hmm. and stuff. But um, I would like to know more about the material that they're using and, and how big those trees are. They don't have to be 18 feet tall to start with, but something bigger than a three-foot tree if they're going to use that as their buffer. Kay. That's my concern. So, Kay. I just want to add, too, and then I'll call on the others. I really feel strongly there needs to be fencing all the way around because of security. It's, it's really important. <laughs> I didn't uh, clarify that during my presentation, but the fencing is proposed to encircle the property. Okay. Um, there will be gated access on the north side of the property. That's how um, the uh, um, property will be secured. Thank you. Amanda. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. And this question is maybe more for Tim Billings. He may know if the um, planning staff doesn't know, but where does this, may I direct a question, Madam Chair? Yes. Thank you. Where does this property lie in regards to the city property or the property the city bought um, for the possible future firehouse? Next door. <laughs> uh, if you take a look here, the aerial view of the property, um, uh, this is the property that uh, this is the property that the city has purchased with the intent of a new fire station sometime in the future. We haven't seen any plans for that at this time, though. Thank you. That was the only question I had, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any other questions? Karen, you want to make your motion? I move that we continue this for two weeks so the applicant can hopefully provide us additional information and, and be at the meeting. Motion has been made by Karen and seconded by Steve to continue us to the August 6th meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. I'd entertain a motion or any other discussion items. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, excuse me, Madam Chair. Oh, excuse me. Vicky, hold on. You, missed. you have your special. Go right ahead. Can you say the location again? Third floor east. Yep, thank you. I just wanted to make sure I got it written down. And that proper. is published online. I have. Under it. Special Planning Commission meeting, in case you didn't get the notice. Steve made motion. Jan seconded to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you. They just set for us again.